of interest rate. Right. Uh, so I need to put that back.
Good morning, everyone. If you would please stand. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. And with your spirit. Thank you for coming, for being here, for Don, and for the family. I know they very much appreciate that as we gather together to pray for him and for all of us as well. In the waters of baptism, Don died with Christ. May now share with him in eternal glory. So what I do is I bless his body with the waters of baptism, because in baptism we enter into the life, the suffering death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Next, what we do is we place on his body the funeral pall. It's a reminder for us that what, in our baptism, we enter into the very life of Christ, and we put on Christ, as St. Paul says. In the, in the pew, there's a hymnal. Uh, I believe it's blue. Or is it brown? Brown. And that'll be our opening song. Our opening song is number 788, Precious Lord, Take My Hand, number 788. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son, who died on the cross, was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all those who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant Don, who has gone to his rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Now, one of the things I wanted to do was just, first of all, to introduce, because everybody's going to be going through the readings and the prayers and the homilies, say, who are those very handsome men back there? <laughs> so Dick Martin, who's part of the parish here, and Dave Henderson. So thank you very, very much. I know you guys have a very long, deep, and a beautiful relationship with the family, so we're very, very glad that you're here. So thank you very much. I know that we have a number of people who are uh, watching in on live stream, so 
please know we, they are part of our prayer today as well. And uh, we'll give you all the Catholic calisthenics. So Karen has her first reading, so you're all set? We're all set, please. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time There is an appointed time for everything, and a time for every affair under the heavens, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, and a time to sow, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. What advantage has the worker from his toil? I have considered the task which God has appointed for men to be busied about. He has made everything appropriate to its time. He has put the timeless into their hearts, without men's discovering from beginning to end the work which God has done. I recognize that there is nothing better than to be glad and to do well during life. For every man, moreover, to eat and drink and enjoy the fruit of all his labor is a gift of God. I recognize that whatever God does will endure forever. There is no adding to it or taking from it. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. But I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I'm a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have a gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I have nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. Love is not pompous. It is not inflated. It is not rude. It does not seek its own interest. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, it will be brought to nothing. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we know partially, and we prophesy partially. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. When I became a man, I put aside childish things. At present, we see indistinctly as in a mirror, but then face to face. At present, I know partially. Then I shall know fully as I am fully known. So faith, hope, love remain. These three, but the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, on behalf of St. Thomas Aquinas Parish 
and everyone who knew and loved Don Michalski, I wish to offer our support, our prayers, and our love to you, Mary, Cindy, Brent, grandchildren, and your entire extended family. The first reading we heard today was from the book of Ecclesiastes. The author states that there is an appointed time for everything on this earth, time for every affair under the heavens. It goes on to say that there is a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Today, we will experience all of those emotions, mourning, crying, yes, those two for sure, but also a time to laugh as we remember Don's great sense of humor, the great stories about Don that each one of us treasures in our own hearts. And yes, the urge to dance and be happy because Don's entire life was one of service without reward, unconditional love for all who knew him, and unconditional love for those who never met him, but were touched nonetheless by his kindness and his actions to all those who were in need. And the second reading was from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. St. Paul states the importance of love in this world. He says that love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love, he says, never fails. Don not only believed these words, he lived them his entire life, through not only his words, but especially through his actions. And his actions are what I remember the most about Don Michalski. I remember when I was a youth minister back in the 1980s here at St. Thomas Aquinas. I was here for 12 years. And our youth group would travel for a week-long retreat to Snow Mountain Ranch in Colorado. It would draw hundreds and hundreds of teenagers during that time. The trips featured whitewater rafting, and horseback riding in the mountains swimming, and so many activities I couldn't even possibly list them all. But in the evenings, we had some of the most powerful faith-enriching sessions I have ever been part of. The cost of the trip, though, wasn't cheap, and there were quite a number of teens who couldn't afford it. When Don and Mary realized that fact, they began earning money working and managing concession stands at Camp Randall, the Cole Center. They did that so everyone who wanted to go on these trips could attend. And after I left St. Thomas Aquinas, I brought those trips to my current parish, St. Dennis. But the need remained there as well. And instead of dropping their involvement in the concession stands because I was no longer at St. Thomas Aquinas, they continue their concession stands, working many events that seemed to the point that they were actually living at Camp Randall and the Cole Center. Don did this so the teens he never had met could experience those awesome retreats. I honestly think Don and Mary worked over a thousand hours throughout the years. Over a thousand hours with no compensation in the least bit. But Don was on a mission that he believed in and there was no stopping him. And then in the gospel reading from John, Jesus was again telling his disciples that he was going to be killed, but on the third day be risen. The disciples were confused and distraught. So Jesus was comforting them by urging them to not let their hearts be troubled. Jesus then acknowledged that they had faith in God, but urged them to have faith in himself as well. He then tells them that he is going to prepare a place for them. And then in his most challenging words, where I am going, you know the way. And Thomas, famous for being such a doubter, then tells Jesus that the disciples have no idea where he is going and thus don't know the way. Things really haven't changed much since then, have they? The world seems to have lost its way. Our own country has become so fractured and so polarized that we spend more time fighting among each other than practicing the faith that Jesus gave us and gave his very life for. Too many people don't know where they are going and are lost. Like Thomas, they cry out, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus responded, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
And so deep down, we do know the way. But knowing the way and following the way, however, are two very different truths. And that's why the world needs more Don Machalskis. Because Don only, not only knew where he was going, he served as a beacon to help others find their way as well. His faith in Jesus Christ was an inspiration to all of us. He modeled what he believed, and he invited everyone in his own quiet way to do the same. His daughter, Cindy, wrote the following. My dad taught by leading through example. He taught me that exploring the world was important, whether it be a walk through the Arboretum, biking around Madison, or on a family vacation to unexplored parts of the U.S. He showed me the beauty of curiosity and the importance of experiencing life to the fullest. Also, his dedication to volunteering instilled in me the value of selflessness and making a positive impact in the world. He broadened our horizons beyond the four walls of our house, and he instilled a sense of responsibility to contribute to the well-being of others and the world around us. Don's son, Brent, recalls the special family vacations that they had together when he was little and even when he got older, filled with many memories. Brent has fond memories, especially of visiting the vet school with his father and the impact that Don's love for all animals had on him. Don worked tirelessly with the American Red Cross, the vet school, and everything he thought he, that he could help with. Finally, Mary, reflecting in their life for 53 years, writes, All his life, Don took care of people around him, from his parents, their families, his siblings, our children and grandchildren, and me. He took care of the world in general as he cared that their day in life was better after meeting him. He shied away from rewards and praises for his good deeds, for he didn't do it for the praises but because it was the right thing to do. It was easy to follow his lead as we were in sync with our faith. My brothers and sisters, Don Machalski will never be forgotten. Don's faith and hope in Jesus is a gift he has left us so that we are reminded that we do indeed know the way. Don's love for all created beings is an inspiration for us to continue the love he had for all. St. Paul ends his letter to the Corinthians by these words. So faith, hope, love remain, these three. But the greatest of these is love. That's how I will remember Don Michalski. I hope you will remember him that way as well. I can invite you to please stand. Chris is going to lead us in the prayers of the faithful. After each of these invocations, you could simply respond with, Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Don received the light of Christ. We lovingly ask you that, O oh Lord, scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our brother Don was nourished at the table of the Savior. May you, Lord of all mercy, welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await your kingdom. We ask that you grant them an everlasting home with their son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We give thanks to Don's love, friendship, and service to our parish. May you, O oh Lord, continue to provide us with faith-filled companions on our journey. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them to the internal kingdom of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Don. We ask that you strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those prayers we hold deep in our hearts. O God, creator and redeemer of all, grant to the souls of your faithful departed servants release from all their sins. Hear our prayers for those we love and give them the pardon and peace they have always desired. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'd like to be seated at this time. Uh, Jim and Tom are going to bring up the gifts of bread and wine. Together we sing number 797, Prayer of St. Francis, number 797. brothers and sisters of my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable and pleasing to God the Father the Almighty. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, hands for, for the, the praise and glory of his name. name. For, for our good and good of all his holy church. Amen. Almighty God, look upon the sacrificial gifts we offer on this day of praise as we ask that you grant your son, your servant, Donald, who shared in the passion and death of Christ, may now share in his resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him, the hosts of angels adore your majesty and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs as we proclaim your glory.
invite you to remain standing if you wish. O Lord, you indeed are holy, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to the glory of your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Giving you thanks and praise, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Until Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection is ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the apostles and martyrs, St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Donald, and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. Your servant, Francis our Pope, Donald our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Donald, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with, his son, with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your holy will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. the distribution of the Eucharist, uh, we'll have a couple stations here in front. If anyone has uh, celiac, celiac, or low gluten, into or gluten intolerance, we have a very low gluten host, and Deacon Dick will be right here in the center, so you can come, and then Dave, Deacon Dave and I will be on the other side here uh, for the communion. If you're Catholic, you know how this goes, you receive the hand or on the tongue, that's fine. Uh, if you're not Catholic, but you want to come up for a blessing, just put your hand over your heart, and that'll be a sign for us to give you a blessing. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who does take away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. Let perpetual light shine upon him with your saints forever, for you are merciful. Eternal grass grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual shine upon him. Together we sing number 555, one bread, one body, number 555. Five.
Let us pray. Please stand. Lord God, your Son has left us in the sacrament of his body and blood, food for the journey. Mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Donald may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You guys want to join me right over here? And a little procedural thing. What we'll do is we have a closing prayer here, and then... Um, you're all invited to a meal, which is immediately in our social area, right across kind of the hall here. You're more than welcome. I know you didn't have a lot of chance to talk, but it'll be a chance for you to share some stories and reflections. And I think you guys like to talk. I think you like to eat. So please know you're more than welcome. Um, I wasn't sure if you we were going to go to the burial right away, but then I saw it was an Edgar, so never mind. <laughs> Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him, may it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. In your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Don in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, you will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servants and help 
us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ Jesus and are with you and our brothers and sisters forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you very much for being here. Not everybody gets two deacons for their funeral. <laughs> this guy must have been really good. Katie, thank you very much for singing. Caleb, for the music, thank you very much for serving. Thank you very much. And the readers, excellent job. All that money your parents spent on your education paid off. <laughs> Again, remember, you're no, more than welcome to join for the meal. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. As we go forth, we sing together number 789 on Eagle's Wings, number 789.